Hi everyone, this is Dr. Stefan. In this video, I'd like to briefly discuss about how your doctor may choose an antibiotic to treat a chest infection, because I think it's a topic that's relatively important. And maybe it's a little bit unclear. Chest infections generally are caused either by bacteria or viruses. Now, depending on whether it's a simple bronchitis, acute bronchitis, or whether it's a pneumonia, the treatment will be slightly different. Now, obviously, if it's acute bronchitis, so this is basically you catch a cold, and you do cough up a little bit of phlegm. That can be sometimes green, but if it's only a sensation of burning around here, around the trachea, the large airways, you've had a cold, most likely that's caused by a virus, not necessarily a bacterium, even if, if the sputum you, you spit out might look relatively you know, dark in color, um, green, etc. So most of the times, acute bronchitis is caused by a virus. In those cases, antibiotics aren't really necessary in most circumstances. Usually this goes away within a week. Now, obviously, if there is a pneumonia, a pneumonia is a fairly severe chest infection. So most people who have a pneumonia, they don't only cough up a bit of phlegm. They feel really unwell. They have sweats. They feel generally unwell. It's not a pleasant thing to have a pneumonia. And there can be also um, other things that are going on. There can be low oxygen. Uh, people with pneumonia sometimes end up in hospital depending on other conditions they may have or how severe the pneumonia itself is. So in those cases, antibiotics are generally required because pneumonia is a bacterial infection in most circumstances. So bacteria can be treated with antibiotics, various antibiotics. Now, which type of antibiotic? In most cases, unfortunately, even if you have an active infection, you're actively bringing up phlegm, sputum, you can spit out a little bit of green phlegm. If we take that green phlegm to the laboratory, it's not often that we actually isolate a specific bug, a specific bacterium, in order to determine which antibiotic is the best to target that specific bacterium. Sometimes we get lucky and we get an sensitivities for a specific germ that we isolate in the lab. However, in I'd say maybe half of the cases potentially we do not have that information. So we need to treat what the way we call it is empirically. So that means that we choose an antibiotic based on the best possible, the best likelihood of treating the most common germs that may cause pneumonia or that chest infection per se. And usually there are protocols which vary from country to country, but patients may be prescribed a simple sort of uh, amoxicillin antibiotic that's quite common. Doxycycline is a fairly common one as well for community-acquired pneumonias and infections. So basically, these are infections uh, that occur in people who are in the community. So they were out of hospital, they haven't been exposed to resistant germs, let's say, or unusual bugs. So it's something that happens in a fairly healthy person. In those scenarios, usually a simple antibiotic like amoxicillin or doxycycline is usually chosen. Now, obviously, if the infection is acquired in hospital or it occurs in patients who may have underlying chest problems, so they may be suffering with COPD, with emphysema, with you know bronchiectasis, or other conditions in which the lungs themselves may be colonized by more resistant germs and an infection occurs, we need to be able to target a broader spectrum of germs. So in that case, we may go for other antibiotics. So things like levofloxacin can be used in these circumstances or augmentin or something like that. Obviously, it depends on the area of the world where you are in because different countries have different protocols which are adjusted sometimes based on the more prevalent um, types of bacteria and the most uh, prevalent type of resistance to various antibiotics because dif this differs from country to country. So all countries have local policies. Obviously, if a chest infection occurs in someone who has been already hospitalized, they're in hospital, they've been exposed potentially to hospital germs, they may be in intensive care and they contract a an infection, that can sometimes be with bacteria that is highly resistant to common antibiotics. And in those circumstances, it's usually necessary to, first of all, target a very, very broad spectrum of bacteria, and also potentially to obtain a culture that tells us what, 
what's the sensitivity of those bacteria? So in those cases, the sampling for the chest fluid, for, for airway fluid, basically may be a little bit more aggressive. So sometimes a bronchoscopy, a camera test for the lungs may be required, or repeated sputum samples may be required before um, adjusting the antibiotic according to these sensitivities. So as you can see, it's fairly complex, but generally we choose an antibiotic based on the patient, how healthy they were before contracting the chest infection, how the infection is behaving, whether they're responding to the simple antibiotics we may start off uh, empirically at the beginning, um, and what's the, the clinical context. Uh, have they been hospitalized recently? Have they been in contact with patients with, with other patients or hospital environments where they may have inhaled resistant bacteria? So that's basically how we choose an antibiotic for a chest infection. Now, this doesn't constitute medical advice, and obviously, in your case, I do urge you, if you do develop a chest infection, to visit your doctor to seek advice from a health professional, from a pharmacist, from someone who is able to provide some sort of personalized advice for you, because this is general information for anyone on the internet, and everyone is slightly different. Everyone's circumstances are slightly different. But anyway, I do hope this is informative and helpful, and I wish you good health, and see you in future videos. All the best.